What's up, y'all? So, I actually, it's been a long time, again, <laughs> since I've been here, um, since I've been on YouTube. And I was not going to share this word. I was just going to kind of keep it to myself because, um, you know, that's... That's just what I've been, you know, doing. I've just been seeking the Lord and talking to him, being real honest with him, honest and open about everything. And so when I had this dream, and the Lord has been literally talking to me about this for probably about a month now, um, I wasn't going to come on here and share it with y'all. I just knew that it was just my dream, my dream, or my word, and my word alone. So I wasn't going to share it with anyone. But I feel led by the Lord to share. So first I want to give you this scripture. The scripture is Isaiah 43 and 19. And God is saying, behold, I do a new thing. And now it springs forth. Shall you not perceive it? And the Lord has been talking to me for the past month about him doing new things. He's doing something new. He's doing something new. And you know, I definitely know I'm in this new season. I moved. I'm in this new home. I love it, by the way, for um, those of you who are wondering. I love my home. Like, it's so peaceful. It's just so me. And But I just kept getting that word. I'm doing something new. I'm doing something new. And he would confirm it, like, every day. He's been confirming it every day in a different way for a month. And I'm just like, okay. You're doing something new. What? What is? It? <laughs> what is the new thing that you're doing? I mean, yeah, I moved, but what is the new thing that you're doing? And you know, I still believe that that's being unfolded. But I had a dream the other night. It's probably maybe what like three, four days ago, and so it's multiple parts to the dream. Um, and the first part was I was in Chicago and I'm driving on the highway and I knew I was not in Alabama anymore. Like it was just, it wasn't the same highway. Like it didn't even look like anything I'd ever, for some reason the roads were, you know, look like that fresh tar, you know, when they lay down the fresh tar and it's the new road. So I'm driving in Chicago and I pull up to like this beautiful, luxurious restaurant slash bank, like to the point where it looked like a bank, but it was a restaurant. And I walked in and there were people that I knew from my hometown that were there serving, but I know I'm in Chicago, but there are people from my hometown there and they're serving. Now these people I'm not close to at all. Like they're just kind of people that... I know of, um, I'm just, I'm looking because my light is, <laughs> my light in my hallway is flickering and I'm like, chill out. Um, <laughs> there are people in my hometown that I know of, but I don't, like I'm not really close with them. I don't have a relationship with them. I'm just, I know of them. So I get there and they tell me it's their first day and I'm thinking, I'm glad it's me. Like, I'm glad that you get to train with me because I know you, I know of you. Like, I'm not going to make you feel any type of way, you know. So, I'm glad that you get to train in your new area, your new arena with me. So, they begin to take me to my seat. Now, the seat was this long booth. So, you know, when you go to restaurants and they have those booths that you can sit in. So we chose to sit in a booth and, but like to get to where we wanted to go, it was extremely long. Like we were in the booth, like, okay, so you know how you got to like slide down or whatever, scoot down to get to your, the, where you want to sit at in the booth. But it was super long. Like I'm talking about, it was probably miles and miles long. It was miles and miles long. And I'm like getting tired. <laughs> like, I'm like, listen. I just want to sit down. I just want to get my food. What's going on? And we're walking. All of a sudden, I guess because we had been walking for a long time just to get to the area that we wanted to sit at. 
as we're continuing to walk down this booth to get to where we need to be, some they bring out our food and some random man goes up to my plate and he starts eating my plate, like off my plate, not just my plate, but he starts eating the food off my plate. So I'm like, oh no, so I'm trying to get out. So now, not only am I like mad because it's taking forever to get to where I wanna be, so now I'm getting ready and I'm like trying to turn around to leave, like to get completely out of the booth to go and fight this man because he has tried to eat my entire plate and it was like he was trying to get me to chase him. And like it was too long of a way to get out the booth. So I'm sitting there thinking like, bro, now I have to try to get out and, and I, I never caught him. Like I didn't catch him. So... That's the first part of the dream that I am going to share. The second part of the dream is for someone else that I know of that I need to share with them personally. So that ain't going to be for y'all. But I, um, the Lord <laughs> began to speak to me because I'm like, Lord, I woke up. And of course, I rebuked it because I'm like, ain't nobody going to come over here and eat off my plate. I'm like, no, nah, what's for me is for me. What the Lord has for me is mine. And ain't nobody going to steal it. No devil in hell is going to steal it. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. See, sometimes you got to go into warfare when you wake up out of them crazy dreams. But you still got to seek the Lord. Like, what's going on? What, what was that? Um, if that was from you, okay. But if that was not from you, I cancel and rebuke it and all of that in Jesus' name. So I woke up and I'm canceling and I'm rebuking because this random man just gonna come up and eat off my plate. Like, first of all, ooh. But the Lord was like, do you not realize that what was on your plate that was being um, eaten by the man could have been replaced by the server? Your server would have replaced that. And I was like, oh, well, you know, Lord, it was the principle of the thing. Like, you know, it wasn't really about the food. It was about the fact that he had the audacity to come up. <laughs> and the Lord was like, you should never chase what I'm going to replace. That thing slapped me straight in the face, y'all. You should never chase what the Lord intends to replace and see the reason that it was taking so long to get to where we had to be was because that represents like your journey in life. And sometimes we're on a journey and it can seem long and it can seem like, gosh, everything is just happening. And it can even seem like, you know, you're never going to get there. It can seem like, you know, this is, this is just like, what is, what is this? You know, y'all ever, I mean, I'm, I'm there with some things like, what in the world is this? Like, why can't I get this figured out? Or why can't this just change? And the Lord is like, you know, that along that journey in life, things are going to, you know, come up or happen or whatever. But you should never try to chase what I intend to replace. See, I don't know whether or not that was really the plate that was intended for me or not. Now, in my dream, I thought, to me, I thought, because it was in the same, like, it was on the same table. It was in my pathway. So, I assumed it was, it was mine. And that's like a lot of us who, maybe even with jobs, we assume that the job is ours. We assume that the promotion is ours. We assume that the husband is ours. Or for you men, you assume, we assume that the wife is ours. We assume that whatever is ours. And so, we're because because the journey is so long, right? You would think, well, surely they ain't got me on this long journey and they ain't going to have the food ready. Surely God ain't got me on this long journey and he got my husband ready. Surely God ain't got me on this long journey. Surely God ain't had me on this job for six years and, and that ain't my promotion. Surely, right? Right? And um, the Lord was like, how do you know that was even meant for you? How do you know? And if it was, you could have told your server and your server could have replaced it. And a lot of times, like, we just get so bent out of shape. Like, man, I really thought he was the one. And he ended up being a jerk just like everybody else. Or, man, I really thought that this job was the one. I've been on this job for 10 years. Or, man, I really thought I had a friend and, and she turned around and she stabbed me in the back. Or I really thought, you know, we have these expectations. And then God is like, 
yeah but when your expectations are broken you can simply go to him in prayer and trust that he will replace it like he's not gonna ever leave you looking crazy and that's that's a word for somebody in itself that's not the word that um that this is about but that's a word for somebody god ain't gonna never just have you out there looking crazy it wasn't for you maybe you thought it was and it just wasn't um but the lord wanted me to 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 come and tell someone don't chase what god is trying to replace some of you are holding on so tight there are so many prophetic words about marriage right now and i know because i'm watching and listening to all of them because no, I'm not going to say too much, but I have been watching. But everywhere you turn, somebody is prophesying about marriage. Everywhere you turn, somebody has just created, like, like there's so many marriage relationship prophetic word channels. And I love that. Encourage women. Encourage men. Encourage those that believe that God has marriage for them. I'm not saying anything against that. Sometimes you just got to come in with truth. Some of us, y'all us we are waiting for things that were never intended for us you're waiting on a man that was never your man you're waiting on a job that god did not intend you to have you are waiting for a promotion but god wants you to start a business or you're trying to start a business and you're waiting on your first customer but god wants you to go full force in in your nine to five because he has promotion for you there he has provision for you there and so you know sometimes we are um just waiting for things that are not ours because God wants to do something new and when when he began to speak to me about that you know I even had to repent about what I was expecting you know repenting for my expectations of what I thought it would look like feel like smell like you know because I don't know God sits high and he looks low I don't know what he has in store for me i can only pray that whatever did not meet my expectation that he would replace it and from that dream he was saying it is his it is his heart and love for you to replace whatever was stolen whatever broke your heart whatever broke your expectation he's going to replace it and he's going to replace it with something new and better just be encouraged that you don't have to chase what God is going to replace. God is willing to replace every broken expectation in your life. You just have to trust him. So Father God, I pray for the person on the other side of that screen. Lord, I pray that you would give them just the grace, the wisdom, the ability, the the guidance to to trust you and to not chase what it is that you have desired to replace in their life. Father God, I thank you that you were doing something new on the inside of them, something new all around them, that you were doing something new on their behalf in Jesus' name, that it's going to be better than what they expected. It's going to be better than what they thought. It's going to be better than what they hoped and better than what they dreamed. Because Father, we know that your way is the best way so father god order our steps and delight in our way father god where we get weary lord we will lean on you and we ask you to be our strength father god we ask you to hold us up in every area that we feel like we're about to let go father god we don't want to chase anything we only want to chase you we only want to chase you we only want to chase you father god i thank you that we're going to submit every broken expectation to you we're going to submit every broken promise every broken dream every every question even that we have regarding those things we submit them to you in jesus name father god do what only you can do do that new thing in our life and do it do it only in the way that you see fit do it only in your perfect timing and father god i pray right now for the person that's over there on the other side of that screen that feels defeated Lord, they feel defeated and they feel like the journey has been too long. And Father God, I just speak that that Galatians 6 and 9 over them. Galatians 6 and 9 over them, Father God. That they do not get weary in well-doing. 
that in due season they will reap the harvest if they do not faint. So, Father God, I thank you that due season is a place, that due season is a place that they are still on time. They are still going to make the appointed time that you have set before the foundations of the world. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. We love you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. Amen. So y'all know I have not abandoned you. <laughs> I just, I feel like I have to say that now. I have not abandoned you. I still love you guys so much. I'm just, you know, y'all pray for me. I'm just, I'm really on a journey right now with the Lord. So y'all pray with me or pray for me and um, I will see you next time.